So this is this is this is the guy who runs. This is the the federal. Do you go, who knows what the who knows what the FTC is? So everyone does. You're the most famous guy here. Um, do you want to give an intro of what the FTC does and is responsible for with regards to influencer marketing? Yeah, sure. So. Um, the FTC is actually the federal government's consumer protection agency, and, and specifically with respect to influencers, our focus is on ensuring the integrity of the marketplace, and that means that to the extent that, um, that consumers believe that online influencers are, are giving authentic views and comments based on their personal likes, um, we want to protect that to the extent that they're getting paid, they're getting free product, they're getting entered into contests or other things where they're getting benefits, then we want that connection disclosed. And, and as soon as the PowerPoint's working, I will kind of walk you through what, what the FTC has been doing in this area and is continuing to do to ensure that the marketplace is, um, is kept um, clear. Uh, one thing I do need to say is, and, is that these views that I express are my own. They are not the views of the Federal Trade Commission, any commissioner, anyone else for that matter. Uh, um, and that is, that's a required disclosure. So I have a question I think a lot of the marketers uh, here have. What, is, what are the best ways that these marketers can tell the influencers to disclose? You know, what are some advised methods? How can they properly, you know, properly represent that they're working with a brand? Uh, the, 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 the best way is to put it in, a contra in the contract. You know, the requirements um, that they do disclose, and we're going to walk through clearly and conspicuously that they have um, been paid or so hashtag ad um, and uh, other ways of, of disclosing, disclosing clearly and conspicuously up front at the beginning, not buried. We're going to talk about some ways that some folks have gotten into trouble by burying disclosures and, and, um, and but putting it in the contract. But then also you need to monitor um, and ensure that the influencers are actually putting the disclosures in. And, and we're going to talk about this in a minute, but, but everybody's on the hook. Um, the brand, the advertising agency, and the influencers. And the FTC has gotten, gone after all three and everybody up and down the chain. Um, and, and so um, obviously our focus has been largely uh, aimed at the brands and the advertising agencies. I'm going to talk about a bunch of cases. I actually oversee the San Francisco and LA offices, and we've brought cases against Warner Brothers. We've brought a case against um, uh, Deutsche LA uh, with uh, connection to Sony. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a minute. So, but we brought a bunch of cases, but our headquarters has brought some cases against influencers too. So up and down the chain, everybody's liable. Um, but for the brands, for the advertising agencies, the key is to put it in the contract and ensure that you're monitoring the behavior. Um, show of hands, who is not based in California? All right, so like more than half of you probably are based in California. So your office runs LA and SF, right? Right, I mean, it's like influencer headquarters. Um, so in terms of, you know, put it in the contract, use hashtag ad, disclose the material connection with the brand, Everyone's liable here. No one can skirt it and say, "Oh, well, you know, I didn't, I didn't know." Um, are there any cases where, um, you know, like what's a big example of a big brand that's maybe had to deal with some not so fun consequences, and what can those consequences look like if some if people decide to not follow this rule? So, so um, the FTC has entered into settlements with all, all the companies I'm going to be talking about today, and. And in those settlements, they're required to comply with um, our guidance on the in, on endorsements and influencers. It's the it's the endorsement guide that is actually available online at ftc.gov. But they have provisions, and if they fail to comply um, with it, they can be subjected to civil penalties of forty-four thousand dollars per violation. So if and there's like ten influencers, that could be. If there's like a lot of influencers, is that a lot of violations? Yes. So um, that you know, now to date, the agency has not sought money, but uh, you know, I will tell you, the agency is continuing to vigorously uh, bring these cases and um, and take this very seriously. 
Uh, we, just, we actually just brought a case against Earthbox, which is a subscription service that some of you have, may have heard about where uh, you get uh, um, snacks and things. And, and what they were doing, which we found particularly pernicious, is they were um, offering to consumers um, free goods if they went on the BBB's website and gave a positive review of Earthbox. Um, the BBB has a very carefully um, set up system designed to ensure that the reviews that are on the BBB's website are in fact authentic and are not paid for or other, in fact specifically the BBB asks people to say that. So uh, our case against Earthbox, we actually required them to uh, give $100,000 in a settlement that also uh, was keyed into um, uh, some violations where they were not adequately disclosing uh, the terms of the subscription service. But again, it's, it's a continual interest in ensuring that everybody understands their obligations under the law and complies with it. Um, and um, anyway. So, yeah, I mean, like, the, and, you know, maybe you're not the right guy to tell this to, but I mean, some of these influencer campaigns, you know, by some, everyone tries to get these influencers to, you know, write positive views, write positive comments, like tell their followers to write positive things. So, so I, the, I get the sense that, you know, the, it's not, it's even more than disclosure. It's also about like properly communicating information, not misrepresenting things. Is, is that right? Or what's beyond disclosure? Right, so at the same time, if you're disclosing, if you're misrepresenting the, the, the benefits of a product, um, that's also a violation of Section 5 of the Federal Trade Commission Act. And, and, and actually, when we talk about, when I talk about the Sony case, um, the, it was actually a two-part case where we brought a case against Sony for misrepresenting the, uh, its Vita product, which was a handheld, they made misrepresentations about what the product could and couldn't, uh, could do. And, and then attendant to that was uh, a, a case against Deutsche LA and Sony because Deutsche LA instructed their employees uh, to tweet about the, ben the wonders of the Vita uh, without disclosing the fact that they were employees of Deutsche LA, which was the advertising agency for Sony for the Vita campaign. So uh, again, like how, how companies can get into trouble, um, uh, you know, there, there are myriad ways you can get into trouble, but one of the ways is if you are making misrepresentations about your product and then the agency uh, issues a civil investigative demand asking for documents and information, and lo and behold, finds out that in the documents that your advertising agency is instructing their employees to tweet without disclosing the, the fact that they're employees of the advertising agency. That's how things can kind of uh, snowball. Wow, so I mean, there were, like two years ago, there was a you know big push for employee advocacy, and you know there's there's all these different platforms that have all these twists on how it's not you know how you don't need to disclose. If a brand is mailing, let's say, free products, you know, to a thousand influencers, there's no requirement to do anything. Is that you know are some of the are there any ways to not disclose? Or if a brand wants an organic endorsement, how could they go about getting that? Or is any free product anything free? Is it is it that cut and dry? Free is, free is a benefit, and, and, and that has to be disclosed. It has to be disclosed clearly and conspicuously. I think we're getting close to getting the PowerPoint going on. So it, it has to be disclosed. And, and you know, uh, um, at the same time, you know, you can be clear about what it is that for an influencer, what the influencer got. So I'm gonna, some of the cases I'm gonna talk about, for example, the Warner Brothers case, where there were video gamers, online video gamers like PewDiePie, who were paid fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 to, to uh, run Shadow of Mordor and, and post it on YouTube, were given very specific uh, requirements about that post, that video, that no bugs could be disclosed, that, that it, uh, Shadow of Mordor could only be uh, cast in a positive light and characters positively described. That is a commercial, right? So that's, that's one extreme. At the other, the fact that somebody got a free product, why can't you just say, I got this product free and be specific about what you got? Because there's a huge, there's a huge gap, and I know, uh, you know, between somebody who's getting 
tens of thousands of dollars with specific contractual requirements to only say positive things about the product versus someone who got a free, you know, a, a free product. So we've talked about this. So an endorsement so is an something. advertising message that consumers believe reflect the independent views of someone other than the sponsoring advertiser. Testimonials, YouTube video, uh, re videos, reviews, uh, tweets, Instagram posts. And, and the notion is really that consumers give more credence, uh, believe better, something that they think is unbiased, authentic. And so to the extent that you're being paid, um, you need to uh, disclose that. Um, so an endorsement is deceptive when it appears to be an honest opinion or the experience of the endorser, but is not, when it appears to be independent and unbiased, but is not. Um, and we have an entire guide devoted to it. You can find it on our website. You can also find it on the Code of Federal Regulations. Um, and, but but any, any material connection has to be disclosed. So if you, the advertiser pays or promises to pay, gives free products, uh, opportunity to enter a contest, and, and the last thing that I mentioned, um, the advertiser is an employer, a relative, a friend of the, of the endorser. Um, and all these aspects have been um, in cases that, that the FTC has brought. Um, the, the key is really, would a reasonable consumer believe that the endorsement reflects the individual opinion and experience in the endorser? Uh, and, 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 and that's really, you know, that, that seems like, I think they're, you know, and, and we've heard this. Oh, you know, all the YouTube gamers, uh, you know, uh, kids know that the YouTube gamers really, um, really uh, are getting paid by the video companies, and, and they all know that. Well, actually, our, our law is even if a significant minority at the 10, 15% think otherwise and think about the, the audience, uh, for, for example, PewDiePie's video game uh, um, uh, videos, you know, you're talking about 12, 13-year-olds who are um, maybe not the most mature um, <laughs> in the world. So that is that is our standard that we're looking at, and that's why. Oops, I guess we lost it. Um, wiggle the. Oh, wait a minute. There it goes. Okay. So, um, you know, we'll talk a little about how do you make the disclosure as effective. Um, first tweet, you know, um, uh, I'm his mom. Okay, there's your connect, oops, sorry. Um, there is, there's the connection disclosed up front. Second way, hashtag ad, up at the front, clear uh, disclosure. So, you know, this can be done. Um, the, the disclosures have to be clear and conspicuous, um, and, and, and that means that just making the disclosure available somewhere, s somehow, is not going to be enough if it doesn't, if it's not something that's clear and conspicuous. And this is an area where, where folks have kind of gotten into trouble. Again, I mentioned this, advertisers are strictly liable. There's no exemption for advertisers who unwittingly caused misleading ads to be disseminated um, everybody's on the hook, the advertising agencies, the social media agencies, social media endorsers, influencers. Um, I want to kind of give a couple of examples. Uh, here's a case where um, uh, someone uh, uh, advertising joint relief um, in, in the midst of this 30-minute ad online was a seven-second superscript mentioning that, guess what? Um, the, the doctor here was married to the manufacturer. W that was not clear and conspicuous, and, and the FTC uh, brought a case against the company. So there's an example. Um, other examples, and I just mentioned this, is uh, tweets that, uh, that uh, Sony had and Deutsche LA had um, employees of Deutsche LA uh, um, put on, uh, saying that, that, that the Vita is a great game changer, not disclosing the fact that they were employees of Deutsche LA, the advertising agencies. Uh, and in fact, 
in the documents. And okay, so this is, we were talking about how companies get into trouble and it can go both ways. It could be that we are looking at potential violations of the endorsement guides and then find that, that the product's being misrepresented. And the flip side, the agency can be looking at whether the company, the, uh, the brand has misrepresented aspects of the product and then discovers in the documents that they weren't telling the endorsers to, uh, to materially, dis you know, to disclose the material connection. It goes both ways. And so in this case, um, uh, we actually were first looking at Sony for misrepresentations about the, the benefits of the Vita. Sorry. Um, and then we found this document um, saying, hey, fellow Deutschers, uh, it's time for, we're asking you to tweet about the PlayStation Vita uh, using the ha hashtag. So, and that, that led to uh, our case. Um, the, the other case, I, I need to hold it. Is what <laughs> um, okay. I, I mentioned uh, our Warner Brothers case, and that was uh, a campaign for Shadow of Mordor, uh, one of their video game, where where uh, they they paid PewDiePie uh, tens of thousands of dollars to to run a a a, um, a, 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 a video on YouTube, and and here. And here, there was a disclosure, but it was in the show more button. And we don't, we don't, okay. wow, this is not, okay. Um, and and uh, we view the show more button in YouTube as not clear and conspicuous disclosure. Um, I only have so many hands. <laughs> yeah, do you want to hold it? Um, and, and so the disclosure was not adequate. Um, we've, we've also... All right. Uh, we've also gone, at, gone after disclosures that are there but are misleading. So in, in, in this case, um, and this was also with, with Shadow of Mordor, uh, uh, Civ HD um, disclosed that, that, um, that, that he had been given the video game, but what he did not disclose is he didn't just get the free product, but he, he, he got the video game free, but he had actually been paid uh, for it. So again, it's exactly, oh, this went out again. It, it's exactly how, um, how you disclose is important. To the extent that you're going to be more specific, you need to be honest and truthful about it. Um, and then, then the last one, which I, I, I do want to show you, is, is um, one, one influencer who, who, I am Wildcat, who disclosed it. Um, all right, you want to try that? So, um, at, at, and I, I wish you could see this, but anyway, in, at the bottom of the show more button, he had a, uh, a line saying the video was sponsored by Warner Brothers, and then right after that, he added the words, no one reads this far into the description, what, what are you doing snooping around here? So, we, we found that that was not clear and conspicuous. Um, okay. All right. Well, so so anyway, so that and that that that's another example where somebody put a disclosure in, but it was not clear and conspicuous. I mentioned the Earthbox case. 
I mentioned. Uh, we, the, the, our headquarters has also brought cases against fashion influencers uh, for not disclosing the fact that they got free product. So the, the key is to be clear um, and think about, to the extent that you have a disclosure, about how clear that disclosure is. Hashtag SP, has, hashtag spawn, ha, hashtag thanks. Is that really telling your audience that, that, the, um, that the product is, is um, that, the, you know, that, that in fact you were um, paid or you got free product? Um, the easiest way is hashtag ad. If you are, whatever medium you're in, if you're in Snapchat and it's image, then, then the disclosure has to be overlaid on the image. It should be um, there for not, not for a very short period, but for really the duration of whatever it is that you're, that you're, um, that you're, uh, um, you're, your thing goes on for, and, and, and we talked about this a bit in terms of, of, of the liability of the brand and the advertising agency, it's a strict liability. So you know, the best way to protect yourself is to ensure that there, it's in the contract with the influencer and then to monitor and terminate. Um, if you have influencers who are violating, they should be immediately terminated. So you know, when we're looking to see whether a brand, an advertising agency, a, retail outlet, whoever is, is complying with the endorsement guides, we're looking to see to what extent they have a robust program in place for their influencers. And, and then the, the, okay, are we good? All right, so and I, I wanna quickly just run to, I've been mostly talking about the advertising agencies and the brands, um, but, but I do wanna uh, run to, um, we have brought some cases against influencers, in particular this one case, CSGO Lotto. Uh, these, these are the two owners of it who are tweeting without disclosing the fact that they were the owners. Um, similarly, a Trampoline, uh, uh, they were, they were, uh, they were uh, not disclosing the fact that they had um, uh, ownership of, of the Trampoline company that they were talking about. Uh, and then uh, two years ago, the FTC sent a, uh, uh, letters to influencers, and you might have heard about it. Um, uh, we've recently followed up with more letters to the influencers, um, uh, and, and just some things that came out of that. Uh, um, tagging a photo with a brand name is an endorsement, and that requires a disclosure if sponsored. I think that's something that has confused people. Thank you to the brands, not an adequate disclosure um, because you know it could just express satisfaction with the company or the product, and not necessarily with uh, um, you know disclosing the connection. So again, here are some do's and don'ts. Uh, clearly disclose when you have a financial or family relationship with a brand. Don't assume followers know about all your brand relationships. Um, ensure your sponsorship disclosure is hard to miss. Don't assume disclosures built into social media platforms are sufficient, and that includes the influencer's platform. Just having a general statement up at the top of an influencer's blog is not gonna cut it. Um, you know, we're looking for specific disclosures at the point of the, of the recommendation or the endorsement. Um, again, treat sponsored tags, including tags and pictures like any other endorsement. Don't use ambiguous disclosures like thanks, hashtag collab, hashtag SP, hashtag spawn, or hashtag ambassador. Um, and uh, again, any image-only platform like Snapchat superimpose the disclosure over the images. Don't rely on disclosures that people will see only if they click more, and that's all the YouTube cases. And uh, you can go to our website and get a lot of information. Um, I, I think the agency, as I mentioned, is bringing actions and investigations. We're also writing warning letters. At the same time, we're trying to educate everybody in the industry to understand that this explosion in social media is great and it's wonderful, but we want to ensure that, con that the marketplace, the integrity of the marketplace is kept intact and consumers really do understand uh, what they're seeing and what they're hearing. And anyway, questions? Does anyone have any questions? Just one second, I'll, I'll bring the mic to you. So can we just, 
introduce ourselves and what we do so we know if we're talking yeah. to an influencer or a brand. And, and, and just before, before you ask your question, I, I, I work for the government, so, you know, I, and I appreciate you, you all will have hypotheticals because I've done this before. I actually did a Screen Actors Guild event and everybody's got lots of hypotheticals and I'm very limited in what I can talk about other than giving you general guidance, so, but, but please go ahead. That's a good example of a disclosure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my name is Jocelyn, and I manage a business of social media sites. Um, so my question is, uh, if an influencer is receiving an ongoing service, so not necessarily a product, and um, they might post on, about it, uh, so if ambassador isn't clear enough, what would they? Re how would you make that clear if they're not necessarily getting paid, they're just getting a service? So, so what's the service, if I could ask? Uh, like anything, like uh, maybe a membership somewhere or right. a hotel stay. So it's or a facial, anything really. Right, so it's a benefit, and they have to disclose the fact. I mean, the easiest way is hashtag ad. And I know, I know what I'm going to hear. The influencers will all say, you know, the hits plummet when we put hashtag ad up. But that's partly because consumers are looking for authentic reviews and guidelines. I mean, and, and, and I've, I, I've spoken at many events. I, when I spoke to Screen Actors Guild, the, the audience was like practically screaming at me. And the day after, I got this really nice note from, from uh, some, someone who, who is an actress who, uh, who, uh, um, uh, who said, you know, I really appreciate the fact that you're in there for the consumers thinking about what their expectations are. So, so you know, and, and I understand that this can be frustrating, but I think if you, if you, if you just stick within the rules, it's, it's in the end going to be the best because I, I do think there's a danger down the road to the extent that, that consumers get so turned off by social media because they feel like nobody's telling the truth about when they're getting, you know, benefits, when they're getting paid. That, that we end up in a situation where, you know, actually, you know, nobody's paying attention. And that's not going to benefit the influencers either. But anyway. And I, and I have a follow up to that. Okay. Wait, so where the brand tells the influencer don't. So if, I, if, 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 if you were the influencer and you're being told by the brand to misrepresent, then that the answer should come back, no, I won't do that because otherwise, and, and we, have, you know, we have brought cases against influencers, we're investigating influencers now, um, everybody's liable up and down the chain. Obviously, you know, we started um, over the last eight or nine years, and our focus was on the, on the brands, on the advertising agencies, but, but we are looking at the influencers. So everybody's on the hook, and I think an influencer can make that very clear, that, that he or she is strictly liable, and sorry, but I'm not going to do it. When you find uh, some sort of controversy in, uh, in a post or, or a line of a uh, certain influencer, are the brand and influencer penalized or just one of them? So, uh, so we can go after all of them, everybody up and down the chain. Now, as a matter of like prosecutorial discretion, I think it's pretty clear that in the first few years we were focused on getting the brands, the advertising agencies to understand things. I think now our focus is starting to shift to where we've sent out let warning letters to influencers. We brought a couple of cases against influencers who were owners. Pretty clear, gee, you know, you own the, you own the business, you should disclose that you are connected to it. Um, but we're, you know, but everybody up and down is liable, potentially. And as an influencer, um, I may put a, I'm here. Oh, there you are. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, as an influencer, I may put a deep link in my, uh, in my content. Uh, I'm not paid uh, unless there's a transaction and con a conversion. Um, what regulations do I have to uh, follow? It's, it's more like a, an affiliate, or is it more like an influencer if I'm only paid at the transaction? 
so you, in, you include a link on your site and then you get paid for that, you're getting a benefit. And, and you have to disclose the fact that, that, that you are, now you can be specific about what that benefit is or you can do hashtag ad or whatever, but you can't, you know, if, you, if you've got a post that's touting a particular product and then there's a link to the product and if someone clicks on that product, you get a benefit, you're getting a benefit. Does that, does that mean that an affiliate who's written an article um, uh, have to disclose it as well? Yes. Yeah. I mean, to, so it, wait. So if if someone's writing an article and has gets a benefit because they have a, a link at the end and they get paid per purchase through via that link, then they're getting a benefit, right? And they have to, you know, they have to disclose it. And and anyway, other questions. Uh, this is uh, Chris Gonzalez here with CMO of Nearich. I got a question. So. Uh, brands like, well, just take a step back. We we incorporate branded brands into our content on social media, and that's kind of how we create ads with influencers. We have brands like Heineken for years that have been incorporating um, things like their brands and logos inside of movies and sort of t television. How does what's the FTC's take on disclosure with like brand advertisements and brand placements in movies when because they're putting you know branded content in a native ad type format? All right. So I get that question often. Um, that that the rules on product placement in 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 movies and so on is it, it's partly federal communications rules, not FTC. It's FCC. It, it and and that that changes. I think I think at the end of the day, um, the, the 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 rules are that 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 those disclosures, that those connections don't have to be disclosed. And I know I've heard from people, isn't that, you know, isn't there some, something wrong about that? Because in a product placement, in a movie, in a, in a right, but, but again, you know, people are, I think you can differentiate that. People are going to see movies, um, not, not necessarily for, What's being touted that the Coke can is on the on the table when you know the police sergeant is is quizzing the the the, the uh, perpetrator or something, at, at very different from influencers where people are going to hear, or read or see things that they think are you know a person's authentic experiences, uh, people and so I I think there's a difference there. But I can see that, that I hear this often from the influencer crew, like, isn't there something wrong about that, that, that distinction? But it back, is the way we do back it. Back here, question, um, Spence, marketing executive. Um, do you have resources to, to review in advance of it? Let's say I'm doing a big major campaign with a lot of dollars. Does your office allow us to, re, you know, do you have resources to review what that campaign is? If you don't, do you have a cure if we go and it's wrong, there's something wrong with it, is there an ability to cure before you ding us with fines? Okay. So, so two part. Uh, um, right. So um, sometimes people say, oh, you're with the FTC, you're a regulator. And, and I always say, no, 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 I don't like regulator. We're enforcers, we enforce the law, you know, we're, we're not regulators. And so part of that is, you know, we don't pre-clear. Uh, we, don't, we don't do that. We do educate, that's why I'm here. Um, and we're all, and why we have all the materials we have online, and we talk about the cases we've brought. But we don't, you know, we don't have any mechanism to do that, um, you know. Uh, and 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 so I guess the last part of your question is kind of well, what if, what if you know we get um, you get uh, investigated by the FTC and quickly fix the problem? You know, a lot of there are a lot of factors that go in there. You know, we're looking at you know the level in which consumers were deceived and how long it went on. You know, so uh, you know I would say that in, I've worked at the agency for 28 years. The faster somebody fixes a problem, all else being equal, the less likely it will end up in an enforcement action. But there are times where agency you know feels that there's been a lot of harm to consumers. There's been a lot of information out there and wants to bring the company under order. So. Hi, I'm Katie. I work uh, at W2O Group as an agency um, with influencers. Um, so Facebook and Instagram have the, what's called the branded content tool um, where influencers and brands can tag 
and disclose a partnership in that way. And it often says, you know, paid partnership with Sony, let's say. Um, do you also recommend having a disclosure within the caption um, in addition to using the branded content tool? Uh, the, the more disclosure at the top, the more, the better you are, um, you know, and, and in fact, I, I used to have an example where somebody had a blog post and at the very bottom, you know, uh, disclosed the fact that there was the connection. Well, not everybody's scrolling all the way down. Not everybody's reading all the way through. It needs to be up front at the first. So the more um, disclosures you have, wherever they are, the better off you're going to be in terms of, uh, of complying with the law. I think that's the final question. We have to jump onto the next session. And, um, but I have a question. Right. I just have to ask this. By show of hands, how many people think that FCC laws as they stand right now are fair to the influence marketing landscape? Are they fair? Huh? Unfair. Okay, well, my question is, what kind I, of... Th this is a lot better when, I, when, <laughs> I, when I, I, did, I did an event at the Screen Actors Guild in AFTRA, and, and it was a different... Uh, so I appreciate the fact you guys... <laughs> so you guys think the laws are fair. Okay, so, so my question is, what kind of feedback, or is the FTC interested in any feedback from the brands, the influencers, and the agencies as we develop these laws, because this is quite an evolving space? So is it going to be fixed as it is, based off what I consider archaic laws? Right, so nothing is fixed. Our guides are just that, they're guides, they're not rules. We actually can you know, in, in, enact rules that, that carry with violations of which carry civil penalties. We, the agency has chosen not to do that in this area. In re reflecting the fact that things are changing and evolving all the time, with social media, so yes, the agency's always interested in, 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 in having an, a back and forth uh, with, with, the, uh, with the community. Can we give a, uh, a big round of applause to Tom for joining us there? Thanks everybody. Thank you so much.